Sweetie, can you get me a pencil, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Pencils, pencils. Oh, there they are. Hmm. Here you go. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. We have such a cute back to school project for you today. <laughs> we are going to make this giant stuffed pencil. <laughs> it can be a toy, it can be a really cute accent pillow. It's super for boys or girls, especially if they're going to school for the first time or if they're going back to school. And I think this would look really cute in a college dorm. So if you know somebody going away to school, this would be the cutest little going away present. And not so little, really. <laughs> It's a big pillow. It's soft, doesn't take very long to make. You can use bulky weight yarn, or you can use two strands of medium weight yarn, or you can combine them. And I'll show you how I'm doing that in the tutorial, and I'll talk a little bit more about yarn in the description bit, uh, where I talk about materials. <laughs> I love pencils. They're sort of like the unofficial emblem of back to school, or learning, or literacy, and they're cheerful and cute, and so, that's why <laughs> I wanted to make this giant pencil. If you'd like a smaller version of this, we actually did a small stuffed version of this pencil a little while ago, and we'll link that tutorial in the description box down below. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a giant stuffed pencil together. In order to make our giant pencils, we're going to need some large yarn. So I'm going to explain the yarn. I've got some leftover Bernat blanket yarn. This is a baby blanket color in yellow. Um, there's 100 grams in a small ball, and we're probably only going to need about 100 grams of it. But I've got a little leftover, so um, I might have about 120 grams here, but probably only 100. Um, and you don't need to make the pencil very long. You can make it really long or really short. So however much of this you've got hanging around will do just fine. I've also got some pink. This is a Bernat chunky weight yarn. This is acrylic. This is polyester, but the two work well together. So that's a big thick yarn. That's a size six. And you need about, oh, I don't know, 50 grams of the pink, 50 grams of the gray or the silver. Um, obviously, this is a giant ball, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. You don't need this much. You only need around 50 grams. There's about 400 in a great big um, ball of this type, but this is also a nice size six, and I think there's a little thing here. Yeah, so it's a size six bulky or super bulky, depending on when the label was printed. If you don't have big bulky weight yarn, you can do what I'm doing for parts of it. You can use two strands held together of a worsted weight or a size 4 yarn. This is a Red Heart or a Bernat um, worsted weight, I can't remember which, and um, it's a size 4, it's acrylic. I'm going to use two strands of this held together where I need the brown, and again with the black, so two strands held together of the black. And two strands of a size 4 held together is a pretty close approximate to a bulky weight yarn, and the whole thing will work together for the project. So if you only have Worsted weight in the colors you need, you can use two strands held together throughout the entire project. If you manage to have bulky weight yarns in all the colors you need, you only need one strand used throughout, throughout the project. Or you can use them both together, like I'm going to do, and I'll show you what that looks like as we go along. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, I'm using an 8 millimeter hook, or a, an L11 in the US, or a 0 in the UK, and of course you're going to need some stuffing. You can use a typical old pillow filling like polyester fiber fill, or you can chop up some socks or t-shirts or any other sort of leftover bits and pieces you have lying around. Uh, chopped up t-shirt makes good stuffing too, especially if you're going to use this stuffed toy as a bit of a pillow. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to start with our pink. So if you're using bulky weight, you need one strand. If you're using worsted weight, you need two strands. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And into that cinch circle, we're going to work eight single crochet.
Once you have eight single crochet, grab the short tail, cinch it up nice and tight. And we're going to continue working in the round, so we're not joining our rows, we're just going to work directly into the first stitch. If you're using a stitch marker to mark the ends of your rows, then you can either put a stitch marker on the last or the first stitch of row one, and then move it to the last or the first stitch of each row as we go, and that will help you keep track of where you are. Into the next stitch, we're going to work two single crochet. I'm going to work over my short tail. You can weave it in later if you like. It's entirely up to you. For row two, we're going to work two single crochet into every stitch around, and at the end of row two, we'll be up to 16 single crochets. At the end of row two, we should have 16 stitches all the way around. We're continuing to work in the round. Move your stitch marker if you're using a stitch marker. The pattern now is two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the next stitch. So two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. You'll repeat that little pattern eight times in total, and that'll bring you to the end of row three, and we'll have 24 stitches all the way around. We're at 24 stitches at the end of row three. We're continuing into row four. Move your stitch marker if you're using them. The pattern now is two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next two stitches. You're going to repeat that little pattern eight times in total. Two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around, and we'll be up to 32 stitches at the end of row four. At the end of row four, one, two, three, four rows, you should have 32 stitches. We've got one more row of increasing to do. So the new pattern is two single crochet into the first stitch, and then single crochet into each of the next three. And then you'll repeat that all the way around for a total of eight times. Remember to move your stitch marker if you're using them. And at the end of row five, we'll have 40 stitches. at the end of row five you should have 40 stitches. That's it for increasing. We will not have more than 40 stitches in each round going forward, so you're only going to have 40 stitches per row going forward. We're going to stick with our pink for a little while now. We're going to make our eraser end, and you're just going to single crochet into each stitch around. So you want to single crochet into every single stitch all the way around. If you're using the stitch marker, just leave your stitch marker where it was at the end of row five, and that'll kind of help keep count for where your rows are at. So just single crochet into every single stitch all the way around. You can do this for about four rows, maybe five, depends on how big you want your pink eraser to be. And I'll catch up with you after a few rows. Okay, I went ahead and worked six rows in pink. So I said four, five, you could even do six. It depends on how wide you want the end of your pencil eraser to be. So I've worked until my last stitch is in line with this little bump where row one turns into row two. So that little spot right there. I sort of follow it up. That's where I work my last single crochet. And this also allows you to count. So here's row one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I finished row eleven. I'm done with my pink, so I'm just going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. Then you're going to grab your silver or light gray and we're going to start on that little metal bit that holds the pencil eraser to the rest of the pencil. Take your gray, and once again, if you're using bulky weight, you only need one strand. If you're using worsted weight, you need two. We're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn with a single crochet right here. So right where we slip stitched and fastened off, right into that stitch. We're going to join with a single crochet. So pick up a loop, and single crochet. Now, because we're working in the round and we slip stitched to fasten off a row, that created this stitch right here. We didn't join in this stitch, we joined in the stitch below. 
So you're going to skip that stitch when you come all the way around. And if you're counting, this will be stitch number one of the row, so that'll be one. Number 40 will be this one here. So you're going to skip right over that little slip stitch or false stitch in this case. If you need to mark it with a stitch marker just so you remember to skip it, then go ahead and do that. Um, or just count all the way around and once you get to 40, which will be right here, you'll know you're at the end of the row. You're just going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. And I'll just show you what that skip looks like when we get there. You can weave in your pink tail you can tuck it to the inside, or you can work over top of it like I'm doing. And I'll see you at the end of row 12. When you get back around to the beginning of row 12, so that's row 12, where we joined our yarn with a single crochet, there's that slip stitch that we finished row 11 with. You're going to skip that. This should have been your 40th stitch right here. And you're just going to continue working in the round by working into that single crochet. In order to close off that little gap, just make that single crochet as tight as you can. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. And then you can just continue single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You'll still have 40 stitches in each row and you'll just have a slight jog where your color changes. And that'll be the back seam because all of our color changes are going to line up in the same place. You want four rows of gray or silver in total. So we've already worked one row of gray or silver. You're going to work three more and you'll have four rows of silver or a light gray single crochet. Each row will start and end right here in line with that little start of gray. So that we know you don't really need the stitch marker because that's kind of obvious right there. So there you go, four rows of gray or silver. I will see you um, in four rows. <laughs> I've worked four rows of silver or light gray. I'm back round to the beginning. That's it for the gray. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. And now you're going to grab your pencil color. So I'm using a nice light yellow. And we're going to start the same way. We're going to make a slip knot. And in order to keep our seam sort of in the same place, instead of joining in the same stitch where we fastened off, we're going to back up one. We're going to join with a single crochet in the stitch just before where we fastened off. So single crochet to join. And then you're going to single crochet directly into the stitch where you did fasten off and you're going to single crochet in every single stitch around. So that way you're not going to see much of a jog in the color and it'll keep the seam more or less in the same place. And I have moved into using the blanket yarn which is super fluffy. You're going to work a single crochet in every stitch around. We're still working in the round so once you get back to the beginning there's no stitches to skip here this time so this will be your last stitch and then you'll start the next row directly into that first single crochet of the new row color. And you're going to work as many rows as you like to make your pencil as short or as tall as you like. So if you're in the process of using up yarn, you might want to just crochet until you run out of uh, the color you're using. You might want to make a certain set of rows. I'm going to crochet round and around for a little while and as soon as I've finished, I'm going to come back and show you how many rows I've done so that you can get an idea of whether you want your pencil shorter or longer. Okay, I've made 19 rows in total in the yellow. So this is what 100 grams of that yellow Bernat blanket yarn will get you. So if you've only got the one 100 gram ball, then you can just do the 19 rows or however many rows you manage to get in with that ball of yarn. I have a little bit left, so I'm going to work a couple more rows, but if you've only got 19 out of that ball, then that's what it's going to look like, and that's perfectly fine. This pencil, like I said, can be as short or as long as you want. I'm just going to finish up the rest of my yarn, and then I'll come back and we'll start working on the tip of our pencil. Once you've finished all of your rows in your pencil body, 
you want to make sure your last stitch lines up with that little bump in the color, so the seams where our little our color stops and starts. And we're going to do what we did with the other color changes. You're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch, snip your yarn, and fasten off. Grab your brown, we're going to start making our pencil a little sharper at the end. Alright, for brown, I don't have any bulky weight brown, so I'm holding two strands of worsted weight held together, and it will be an approximate bulky size. So if you're doing that, then you're going to treat both strands held together as one single big strand, and here we go. We're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn in the single crochet, so the stitch just before we fastened off. We're going to join with a single crochet in that stitch. And then we're going to single crochet in every single stitch around, starting with the stitch that's the where we fastened off, so not the slip stitch, but the stitch directly below it. And then if you count 40, so this will be your first stitch, the one you joined with a single crochet, count all the way around and your last stitch will be right up against it. So you're going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. You should still have 40 stitches in every single row. Forty stitches later, you're back to the beginning. And now we're going to work a row of decrease. So we are working, there is no stitches to skip, but we are working directly into the first stitch of this row and we're going to work a single crochet two stitches together. So we want to make it a little tight because we don't want any gaps in our pencil. So we're going to pull up a loop in the first or the next stitch and then pull up a loop in the stitch immediately next to that one. So you should have three loops on your hook. Remember that these two strands count as one because I'm making a bulky weight yarn out of worsted weight. Wrap and pull back through everything. That's a single crochet, two stitches together stitch. Now you're going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So just a regular old single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then you're going to repeat. Single crochet, two stitches together. and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that little pattern eight times in total all the way around and we'll be back down to 32 stitches at the end of this row. You should be down to 32 stitches all the way around and we're starting to close in the end of our pencil. We're going to work two rows of just plain old single crochet all the way around. So two rows of single crochet, each of these two rows will have a total of 32 stitches in it. Alright, we should have four rows of the brown color in total. So you've got one row of straight single crochet that we started with that was 40 stitches. We had a row of decreasing that brought us down to 32 stitches and then two more rows of just straight old single crochet each row at 32 stitches each. We are now going to work another decrease row. So we're going to begin by working a single crochet two stitches together. And then single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So just one single crochet in each of those stitches. And then we're going to repeat. Single crochet two stitches together. and then single crochet into each of the next two stitches. You're going to repeat that eight times in total all the way around and we'll be down to 24 stitches. At the end of the fifth row of brown, so we've got one, two, three, four, five rows of brown now, you should be down to 24 stitches. We're going to work one more row in the brown color and that is just single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So at the end of this sixth row of brown, you'll still have 24 stitches. All 
right, at the end of this sixth row of brown, you should still have 24 stitches. That's it for the brown. We're going to transition to black now. So we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. Grab your black yarn and we're going to join it up too. Take your black. If you don't have a bulky weight and you're only using two worsted weight strands, make sure you're holding both together. Make a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn with a single crochet in the stitch to the right of where you fastened off. So that's stitch number one. Now that I'm working in black, it's going to be a little trickier to see, but you can should be able to see your own stitches fairly clearly. The next stitch we work is going to be into the stitch right here where we fastened off our color, so not into the slip stitch, into the stitch below it. You're going to work all the way around. You should still have 24 stitches, and your last stitch for this first row of black will be right here. And then we're going to work directly into the first stitch of this row. So. One single crochet in every single stitch around. That should still be 24 stitches, and I'll see you at the end of this row. At the end of that first row of black, you should be back around to the beginning. You should have 24 stitches. Pull up on your hook. We're going to start stuffing our pencil now. So you're going to want to grab all of your stuffing, whatever stuffing you're using. I've got a little bit of everything here. I've got some polyester fiber fill, which is old pillow stuffing, and I've also got some chopped up t-shirt. I've got quite a big bag of it below me. So grab whatever stuffing you're using and start stuffing your pencil. Try to make it as even as possible. So make sure you've got one section, like a chunk of your uh, eraser, filled first. Make sure that it's nice and even all the way around before moving on. And just keep sort of squishing your pillow or your big pencil here as you go to try and make sure that it doesn't get lumpy or bumpy in one spot or another. After you've stuffed your pencil, I'm going to try and show you what it looks like there. So I've got all that stuffing in there. Don't stuff it right up to the brim because we still have a few more rows to work and then you can add a little stuffing as you go. So we've completed our first row of black. We're going to do some more crochet now. This is a row of decrease. So your last stitch will end in the last stitch of the previous row. There is no stitch to skip. We're going to begin the next row of black with a single crochet two stitches together. So pick up a loop in each of the next two stitches. You should have three loops on your hook. Wrap, pull back through two. Single crochet into the next stitch, and then repeat all over again. You're going to single crochet two together, single crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that little pattern eight times in total all the way around. We're going from 24 stitches down to 16. Take your time. At this stage in the game, <laughs> it's heavy and difficult to roll around. Alright, you should be down to 16 stitches in total. So there's your 16 stitches all the way around. You're now going to work two more rows of just straight single crochet. So one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. For two more rows, each row will have 16 stitches in it. And I'll see you at the end of the second row of straight single crochet, the fourth row of the color black. Alright, once you have finished the fourth row of black, so we've got one, two, three, four rows of black. You should have 16 stitches all the way around. I know it's a little tricky to see, but now you want to add a little more stuffing. So grab the stuffing you've got and you want to stuff stuffing into your pencil so that it's nice and firm up top and you want to just bring it up to the lip of your crochet. Alright, we've got one more row of decrease to do. We're going to single crochet two stitches together all the way around. So it's a little tricky here with this long 
pillow. But you're going to single crochet two stitches together eight times. So single crochet two stitches together eight times all the way around. We'll be back down to eight stitches. And we're almost done our pencils. Once you've single crocheted two stitches together all the way around, you should be down to eight stitches. So if you count up, you'll have eight stitches. We're going to do one more row of just single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Then we're going to add a little more stuffing and we're going to close it up. Once you've single crocheted in each stitch all the way around, you should still have eight stitches. We're going to Make sure that our last stitch, so the last single crochet you made, is somewhere in alignment with sort of the jog where we joined our yarn in the first place. And you want to just pull up on your hook, add any little extra bit of stuffing you feel you need in order to keep that sort of the nose cone part of our pencil nice and firm, and then we're going to close it up. Your stuffing should come right up to the rim of your crochet, so you should have completely stuffed your pencil at this point. We're going to fasten off by slip stitching into the very next stitch, just like we would if we were fastening off any of the other colors. And you're going to leave yourself a nice long tail. So, I don't know, maybe uh, 30 centimeters or 12 inches, maybe a little bit more. You don't need too, too much, but it's always nice to have a little extra tying yarn uh, just to be on the safe side. So fasten off, pull it out through that loop. And now all we're going to do is just cinch up the top. So you're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to thread up those threads. If you're using a single bulky weight, then that's great. If you're using two uh, worsted weights held together, then you're still treating it like a single strand. And all you're going to do is weave your hook in and out through those last few stitches. So in one stitch, out the stitch next to it, in the next stitch, and out through the next. So you're just weaving your yarn in and out around the top of the last row. So in and out, in and out. There we go. Pull tight. That should cinch up the nose cone area of your pencil. And then you're just going to kind of go around one last time. So it doesn't matter which stitches you put your thread through. Sorry, I'm trying to keep this on the camera here. <laughs> it's kind of big. You're just going to sort of go around one more time, weaving your hook through some stitches, just so that there are no gaps. You don't want to see any of your stuffing poking through. So you're just cinching up that nose cone so that it's a nice little rounded point at the top. So it looks like that. You shouldn't see any little holes. You shouldn't see any of your stuffing poking through. And then all you need to do is make a little knot so you can grab a piece of a stitch, a post, something like that. Make a knot. Make it nice and tight up against the nose of your pencil. And then you're just going to weave your yarn through some stitches across the outside. So this is you now, like you would weave in your yarn in a regular pattern. You're just weaving your yarn through some of the stitches all the way around. It's going to help to close in some of those little gaps. So if there's little gaps in between your stitches where you were decreasing, it's going to help to, to lessen those little spaces. And that's why I say leave yourself a nice long tail because then you've got lots of this tail to play with as you weave it through some of these stitches. So go ahead, weave your yarn 
through all of these stitches, just going around and around and around, trying to make sure that you're cinching shut any little spaces that might be there from the decreasing process. And I'll catch up with you in a minute. Once you've woven your yarn around and around and around through those stitches and you just got a little bit left, all you're going to do is just poke your needle into the body of your pencil and you're just going to pull the rest of it into the body of your pencil. And if any of it's sticking out, you can either trim it off or weave it back in. I will elect to trim it. <laughs> there you go. Squish your pencil. Make sure that all that stuffing is evenly distributed all the way through. <laughs> and your giant stuffed pencil is all finished. And there you go. One giant stuffed pencil. A fun toy, a cute pillow, especially for somebody going off to school, going away to school, or starting school for the first time. Girls or boys. If you'd like a copy of this written pattern, you'll find it for sale in our Etsy shop, and we will write a link in the description box down below. I hope you had fun making this giant pencil along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. <laughs> Bye! Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below.